I want to welcome you all to our chapel service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This might not be a service like you've ever experienced before. Hallelujah. Okay, we, we just opened up with the Torah reading. Okay, and now we're going to read out of Exodus 19, 16 to 20. Because we're talking about two, we're like time traveling tonight. We're going back to when Israel came out of Egypt and they crossed through the desert until they got to the mountain of God. Okay, so we're going to talk about that real quick. Just quote a scripture from there, Exodus 19, 16 to 20. And it came about on the third day when it was morning that there was voices, now pay attention, I know it says thunder in your Bibles, but it's voices in the Hebrew. And lightning flashes, and actually the lightning flashes are not even lightning flashes. They were actually lapidot, like little torches of light, of fire. And a thick cloud upon the mountain, and a very loud shofar sound, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moshe brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now in the Hebrew, the word that's used there actually means underneath, as if they were underneath the mountain. So later today, we're all going to get under here and recommit our lives for the passion of the Lord in our lives, and the passion of His Word. So this is our mountain right here. It kind of looks like a mountain, too. Isn't that cool? I didn't notice it until now. It looks like a mountain. Okay. Uh, at 18, um, chapter 19, verse 18. Now Mount Sinai was all in smoke because Jehovah ascended, descended, sorry, descended upon it in fire, and its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. When the sound of the shofar grew louder and louder, Moshe spoke, and God answered him with voices. With a voice. Okay? And Jehovah came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and Jehovah called Moshe to the top of the mountain, and Moshe went up. Okay? And in Exodus 20, 1 to 26, this is what happened. And God spoke all these words. And he went through basically, these are the Ten Commandments. Okay. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol or of any likeness. Of that is in heaven. Uh, that is in heaven. Above. I think this thing's done. Yeah. Okay, of that which is in heaven above, or on the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. You shall not worship them or serve them, for I, Jehovah your Elohim, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing uh, loving kindness to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for Jehovah leave him uncorrected who takes his name in vain. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day of the Sabbath of the Lord your God, in it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male or your female servant or your cattle or the sojourner who stays with you. Even, this, even your cattle gets to, to rest on the Sabbath. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore Jehovah blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be prolonged upon the land which Jehovah your Elohim gives you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. Adultery, sorry. You shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. There's a lot of false witness going around right now in this country and in this world. You shall not covet your neighbor's house, nor shall you covet your neighbor's wife, or his male servant, or his female servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And all the people perceived, now get this, perceived the 
the voices and the lapidot in Hebrew for, th for, for lightning flashes, they were actually, they were actually flames. Um, what what did, can I just call them? Like, like little torches. 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 They all perceived it. They all saw the voices and the torches and the sound of a trumpet or the sound of a chauffeur actually and a mountain smoking and when all the people saw it they trembled and stood at a distance. I want you to, to see it, okay? They saw, if you see, first of all, if you see voices, how are you going to see voices? Isn't it going to look like a mouth? Maybe a tongue? Okay. And then they saw little fires. What does that sound like? This happened in Acts chapter 2. Tongues of fire. I've lost a few people, uh, not to the ministry, I mean in the ministry, but when I was talking to people about this, that God is the first one to speak in tongues. <laughs> and the Jews say he offered the Torah to the whole world on Mount Sinai. Seventy nations were in the world at that time. So he spoke in 70 tongues. Okay, so when the people saw, they trembled and stood at a distance. And they said to Moshe, speak to us yourself and we will listen. But let us not, let not, don't let God speak to us lest we die. And Moshe said to the people, do not be afraid. For God has come in order to test you and in order that the fear of him may remain with you. So that you may not sin. So the people stood at a distance and Moshe approached the thick cloud where God was, and Yehovah spoke to Moshe, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, You yourselves have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. You shall not make other gods besides me, gods of silver or gods of gold, and you shall not make for yourselves. You shall not make an altar of earth for me, and you sh shall sacrifice on it. I'm sorry. You shall make... Uh, it's a bit tougher, okay. You shall make an altar of earth for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. And I will make an altar. If you, sorry, if you make an altar of stone for me, you shall not build it or cut of cut stones. For it, for if you wield your tool on it, you will profane it. And you shall not go up by steps on my altar, lest your naked, uh, that your nakedness may not be exposed upon it. Okay, now that's what happened at Shavuot uh, about, I think, 1,500 years before Yeshua came. Okay. Now let's go to what happened in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2. 1 to 12. Now, I, I want you to keep in mind this. They were all unified. All of Israel was unified and made a covenant agreement with God on the mountain that was on fire with the glory and the power of God. And tongues of fire. Great, incredible things. Okay, what happening? And God was speaking. And, and they said, yes, we hear it and we will do it. We will follow you. Okay, so that means that, you know, that's the covenant. And they were all in agreement. They were all one. Unity. And 120 men were gathered in a room in a book of Acts. And they were in unity, waiting for the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost had come, which really is Shavuot, it's the same day. Pentecost means 50. Shavuot means 7. I'm sorry, 7, uh, seven weeks. Shavuot, a, seven, a period of 7. 7 weeks. We got through 7 weeks of the counting of the Omer. We got through 50 days. It means the same thing. When Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind. Now, when we blow the shofar, it's the breath of God coming through it. It's like a violent rushing wind. Okay? And it filled the whole house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues as of fire. There's the tongues again. 
distributing them themselves and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit was giving them utterance. Now when there were, there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. So there are the nations, remember? God offered the Torah, He offered the truth, the commandments to all the nations. And it says there were Jews living in Jerusalem, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were bewildered because they were each one hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and marveled and said, Why are, are not all these who, who are speaking Galileans? And how is it we how is it that we each hear them in our own tongue, in our own language, to which we were born? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mes Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phryg Phrygia and Pamphylia, uh, Egypt and the districts of Libya around Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them in our own tongues speaking of the mighty deeds of God. And they all continued in amazement with great perplexity, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others were mocking and saying they're full of sweet wine. Okay. Now, let's, let's pray. And we're going to blow the shofar. And I am really believing God. It's time for a great outpouring again. Amen. The outpouring of His glory. There's a harvest out there. And we all, Yeshua said, pray for laborers in the harvest. He said on Shavuot before he, he, he went to the cross, probably a year or so before, he said, they say four months till the harvest. Because the final harvest is in around Rosh Hashanah to Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? But I tell you, the fields are white unto harvest. There's going to be a lot of souls. You don't have to run after people to bring them in. Because they're going to come to you. Because they're going to see the glory upon you. They're going to see the power of God upon you. They're going to see that this is real. You're real, and I've been lied to. That's that's what they're going to say. And we have to have the answers for them. Because they're not going to want nominal Christianity or nominal Judaism. They're going to want the truth. This is spirit, and it's the truth. It's the word and spirit. Throughout the Bible, throughout the scriptures, it talks about the word and it talks about the spirit. The word came on Shavuot on a mountain. The Torah. And the Word was implanted into hearts through the power of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, in the book of Acts. That same Torah is, is residing in us. And we do His commandments because we love Him. Because we love His... You know what? It says in the end, in, in 1 Thessalonians, that the, under the, the false Messiah, the Antichrist, they are... They are their, their consciences will be seared to evil. And it says because they had no love for the truth. We God wants us to love His Word, to love His calendar, love His times and seasons, and walk by the Spirit, walk in the power of God. Both. Both of them together. He has a calendar, and we need to get on this calendar. Things are about to change and radically change for all of us. And now is the time for the harvest. And we have to have answers for people. So let's let's um, let's pray, and I'll, I'll teach for a little bit, and and then we'll we'll have time. So we wait for Josh. Josh. He's in the back. Wherefore, are you, Josh? What? <laughs> He's in the bathroom? Okay, well, I'll keep no, talking then. Okay, he's in the back. <laughs> Josh. We are following you. Hello, my friend. The deep and dark voice, huh? Thank you for all, for all you for coming to the service. We try to make it as comfortable as possible. We have lots of fans blowing. Okay, so. 
Just rejoice before the Lord your God. This is a season of rejoicing. Abba, I just lift up the service to you, Lord. This is These are your people, Abba. We are your people, Abba. And we are ready to be in service to our King. I ask, Lord, for you to renew our passion. Abba, renew that hunger and thirst. A desperation for you, Abba, because we won't make it unless we're like that, Abba. You don't want people who are religious. You want people who are serious, who are intimate. You are jealous. We have so many gods. We have so many distractions before you, Lord. Let us hear the sound of the shofar. Let us hear the sound, Lord, and uh, and hear your voice, Lord. Your sheep hear your voice, Abba. I ask, Lord, for you to make us extra sensitive, Lord, to your voice. Abba, we, we are changed from one season to another, Abba. And we ask, Lord, to be fully ready, Abba. We have prepared ourselves, Lord. We, are, we want to be fully ready for the work that you have for us, Abba. Not to fear as the rest of the world fears, but to trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. To trust in you. To walk with you, Lord, on a whole new level, Abba. Because when you revealed yourself to the children of Israel, you are not just, are you testing them and to see if you would have, they would have the fear of God in them. But it says in another place, you were trying to raise them up to a higher level. Hallelujah. Raise us up to a higher level, Lord, but you raise us up. We are not going to raise ourselves up. We humble ourselves before the great king. In the name of Yeshua. ברוך אתה יחובה אלוהינו מלך העולם אשר קדשנו ומצוקר וציוונו על מצוות שופר. Blessed are you, Yehovah Elohim, King of the Universe, who has sanctified us by our commandments and has commanded us to sound the shofar. study, take one. If you're not going to study, then don't take one. Because it's all here. Every detail they want to know about Shavuot. I don't mean to seem so negative, but, but the reality is, if you take a bunch of paper and you don't do anything with it, it just gathers dust. We have to know the meanings. There's also one on Ruth. So grab the ones on Ruth. Why don't I have something on Ruth? <laughs> Because the story of Ruth is really, you know, the whole thing that the book of Ruth was written during the time of the counting of the Omer. Okay, so the whole thing is around Maria. the time of the counting of the Omer. So ever, all the fivefold ministry is there, okay, and it, there's a lot to teach us. Okay, um, so to sum this up, different about Ruth? Just, you know, so we'll get Ruth finished. Okay. She was a Moabitess. And a, and a woman named Naomi, a Jew, went in a, in a terrible time of famine. Went to live in Moab. Okay. And she, and her and her husband, Elimelech, which is my God, is king. That's, that's his name. She had two sons. Okay. Both her husband and the two sons died. They had got married to Moabite women. One's name was Orpah, 
was married to one of the sons, and the other's name was Ruth, or Ruth in Hebrew is how you say it. There's no H there, okay? Uh, and so she heard there's some good news and things are getting better in Israel, so she was about to leave. So her daughters-in-law came up to her and said, well, let's go with you. Okay, we'll go with you. And he says, no, no, go back to your people, your family, go back to your gods, okay? What am I gonna do? I can't produce another husband for you, okay? So what ended up happening was Orpah, after two times pleading for the daughters to just go back to their gods, go back to their people, Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, Naomi, and went back to her people and her gods. But Ruth said, where, where am I to go? Your God is, is my God. Okay? Your people is my people. Okay? Let nothing but that separate me from you. Okay? Your God is my God. Your people is my people. This is the call of Ruth. I want to follow the call of Ruth. I want to follow that call because it means that I'm going to attach myself to a people to a people that God has a plan for and a way of living that is that is connected to heaven, that is connected to this Torah that was written. Okay, that God has a, he has a word, he has his commandments. And Ruth said, I'm going to go with the Jewish woman, my mother-in-law, and I will be a Jew like her. Okay, and then she ends up marrying uh, Boaz. Boaz, and Boaz had Obed, I think, and who had David. In other words, King David came from this couple. Okay, this this uh, this couple in which Ruth would find a husband when she went back with Naomi. Okay, Naomi was sort of like the Holy Spirit. Okay, and we God has given us an understanding and a calendar and a way to live with His people, Israel. He, he has joined, and through Yeshua, through the blood of Yeshua, his, his sacrifice, he has joined us, Jew and Gentile, as one. One new man. We are all joined to the covenants of God. You know, but something terrible happened around the year 3, 325, give or take a few years. Uh, because of the great persecution of the first believers, they, uh, they what, what happened is they, they, you know, made a compromise. And the compromise was, we will not do the law anymore. We will not circumcise our children, our male children. We will, we will not follow the Torah. We will not eat kosher. We will not do anything. And why did they make that agreement? They were not even Jews, but they were joined to Israel, and they were dying for Messiah. They were... They were being martyred for the Lord. And to end the persecution, they made a, a horrible agreement with Rome. And when that agreement took place, and it's under Constantine, you need to read about this. What they did was they, the Holy Spirit, what God did is the Holy Spirit left the church. The true church became like an underground church. They were like a hidden remnant. But the majority of the church became what we call the universal church or the Catholic church. And the Protestant is only a slight improvement. And I mean a very slight improvement. Because they still follow doctrines that came from Rome. Amen. In order to get this fixed, we have to leave Rome. We Amen. made an agreement with Rome like Adam made with Satan when he, when he took of the fruit of the tree when God told him not to. Okay, but Yeshua said, I give you all authority and all power. Well, God is getting ready to restore that back to all of us. But he's saying you will not follow the ways of the Gentiles and the Greeks any longer. You will follow my ways. My ways are holy. These are God's ways. Amen. God did not give Christians a new religion. There is no new Christian religion. It's not even a Jewish religion. It's a one new man religion. It's a whole new creation. It's a whole new creation that brings the two together in love. You know, God brings people together. He doesn't tear them apart. He's not divisive. He doesn't divide. But what do we have? Denominations. 
We're all divided. And it's time to come together. The true believers of the Lord are unified and love one another. I know it's hard because we, everybody wants to judge us. Everybody wants to, you know what? Anybody points the finger should be pointing at their own self. Like I always say, you have three pointing back to you. You got the Father, the Son, and the Ruach, the Holy Spirit. We are all a mess. Every one of us. But he's coming for a bride without spot or blemish. So that means... It's those that look at themselves. Because all God wants us to do is say, okay, I have blemishes, I have spots. Lord, help me. And he says, okay, now that person I see is without spot or blemish. Because they acknowledge that they have it. Amen. Now I see them without that. Because they acknowledge it. Remember about the you know the parable of of the the Pharisee, I think? The Pharisee and the tax collector. And, it, and, and the tax collector says, Well, let's be up a sinner! And, and, and the Pharisee said, I'm glad I'm not like that man. <laughs> he thought it was all righteous and pious and all that. And God is with the humble, the broken and contrite, with the small. And God is going to raise us up. He's going to take down the arrogant and the prideful. He's going to raise up the small man, and the humble and the broken. One of these days, people are going to say, who are those people? They have such power. The glory of God is with them. I never heard of them. What book have they written? Okay, and then, and then they're going to say, what happened to the followers? What happened to all these people? Okay, they're, they're gone because they, they did not acknowledge that they were sinners. We have to acknowledge it. God knows the heart. We can't fool him. Amen. Okay, so they were preparing to meet with God. Okay, and they were all together, all one in one accord. So today is a day of unity. Today is a day of unity. Today is a day of returning back to God. Returning, repentance, teshuvah. Uh, recommitting ourselves to him and following his ways. We have not come to a mountain on fire, though. Aren't you glad? And, and a chauffeur getting, although I would have loved to hear the chauffeur getting louder and louder and louder. I'm sure Moshe loved it. Moses, like, he was enjoying it, you know. Oh, look, Lord, you're showing yourself to the people like I know you. <laughs> it's, it's like the people are like, ah! <laughs> too much. That's too much. You speak to us, Moshe. Okay. But not only that, when we said yes, we will do your commandments. We were all they were all under the mountain. Okay? Then they see this mountain that's above them. We don't know for sure that the mountain was above them, but there's a there's a lot of Jewish writings that say the mountain literally lifted up. And they and Moses brought them underneath the mountain to make it <laughs> to make the agreement with God to lift it off the ground. And it became like a hookup. Wow. Isn't that so cool? It's like it's like a mountain. Yeah, like that side. Has a pointy top on, on the real outside. It's in Saudi Arabia. You can look at videos on I don't mind it. Anyhow, uh, so we're we're re recommitting underneath the mountain. But we're also God betrothed Israel. And you know what the betrothal contract we call a ketubah? It is a bridal contract. And even when you haven't consummated the marriage, it counts. The only way to get out of it is a divorce. It's a contract. And guess what your contract is? Even all the Gentiles who are joined to the faith, you know what your contract is? It's the Torah, the five books of the Torah. God guarantees food, clothing, and intimacy. He, so why do we worry? If we can't get food, or the food costs too much because we have an idiot in the White House trying to, to make a mess of everything, okay? Uh, you know, the the thing is, God is going to provide. Yeshua said, why do you worry about what you eat? Why do you worry about what you wear? You know, the reason Messiah said that is because that's bridal talk. That is, God's already guaranteed it to you. It's in the Word. You 
will not starve. Even David said, I have not seen the righteous begging bread or his seed lacking anything. Then you might be tested and believe the Lord in faith for God to provide. Quote the word. Lord, is your word true or is man? And God has to prove his word to be true. Amen. So there will not be lack. In these coming days, take this to heart. If you have no food on the table, then you pray and you thank God for his provision. Because you said, I will not lack anything and my seed will not, I mean, I, I, will, I will eat, I will have food, and my seed will not lack anything. Hallelujah. Walk by faith, not by sight. And it's impossible, impossible to please the Lord without faith. Ask for faith if you need it. Uh, there's, there's so much that, that this is about. I don't want to miss anything. <laughs> okay? So it's about a wedding. Shitzvei uh, Edesim is the cotton wedding contract. You're married, I'm married. Okay? God is jealous when we put other gods before him. When we put anything before him. Okay, um, they blew, I'm sorry, that I already talked about the blowing of the shofar, they blew the shofar in ancient times. They had two loaves of bread. Yeah, have two loaves of bread here. The two loaves are made out of, out of two omers. Okay, each of you is an omer. Okay, we've been counting the Omer to ourselves for a reason. To get ready, to get equipped, to get prepared for the past 49 days. Now we're at the 50th day, almost when the sun sets, it'll be the 50th day. Okay, so so we're, we're like getting ready for something amazing here. And, and these are both, by the way, they're both leaven. Oh my God, that's like sin. <laughs> you know, we eat unleavened bread during uh, the piece of unleavened bread, and it's symbolic of how Messiah took our sin away. But here's two leavened breads. You know what? That's all God's all God's saying in that is, Jew or Gentile, you still walk in this flesh. You still have leaven in you. But the, the difference is we're willing to deal with it. We're, we want to get we want to get rid of it. Whatever is of Rome in me, may it go. Amen. Amen. That's what we gotta say. Whatever is in Rome, get it out, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Suck it out of me. Do whatever you need to do. <laughs> get it out of my life. It's the time to disconnect to Rome so that we can get all authority over heaven and earth back. And I believe that's coming to all of us who, who are recognizing it, who are looking for it. And the outpouring of the Spirit is when He takes His Word and He seals it inside of us. By the Holy Spirit and by power, it's the coming of the glory. It's coming. Um, okay, I'll share about the two eleven loaves. Okay, now uh, there's something else uh, I, I want to share with you. Okay, in the first fruits that occurs on the day of Yeshua's resurrection, that was called Bikurim, Bikurim, or first fruits. That was the big arena since you, the wheat was not yet coming out. It was the barley. It was the, the first fruits of the barley. Yeshua and all who resurrected with him, which was every believer up to the time of that man, other man on the cross with Yeshua, all resurrected. They were the barley harvest. The first fruits of the barley harvest. Okay, the, we are wheat. Think of yourself as wheat. Okay. I'm not saying go eat a loaf of bread, okay? You know, I, bread's probably not good for us. Not much bread. Okay? But what I'm saying is that that we are wheat, and he called us wheat. Okay? And at the end, the wheat is going to be taken up. And and then and by the way, did you know that the top of wheat bows? That the, the top of it bows down? And the top of of the um, the the tears, thank you. The top of the tares is straight up. You know? It's arrogant. It's pride. Okay? So it's those that are bowed down before God that he's going to pull up. And he knows the difference. Okay? Uh, and we're, we're waiting for the wheat harvest. Okay? And... Um,
Okay, the word bar barley is setora. Okay, and it's also called the poor man's bread. Okay, um, it's the fire. Now, this is what I got from the meaning of it, and I think also me and Josh were talking about this once. The fire of understanding is from the man who was first in the spirit. This would be Yeshua at his first coming. The word for wheat is chit. Sorry. Chita, or a plural chiti. Okay, and it literally means, breaking down the meaning, protect the witness of the Spirit. Also may mean the protection of the witness of the Spirit. Now, what are you? Okay, I'm sorry, 13, I'm on page 14. Page 13. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so the harvest that we're bringing in is a harvest of wheat, not the page 14. The barley and the wheat, okay. This is stuff probably that I don't know if they talk about in many places. That you are wheat and Yeshua and all those that resurrected him with him were the barley, okay. It started actually on the previous pages. Do you know that actually Shavuot is called Bikarim? Why is Shavuot, the feast that we're in now, also called first fruits? Bigarim is first fruits. It's connected to the first first fruits. The one that Yeshua has resurrected, uh, has resurrection, uh, the first fruits of the barley, that we are the, the first fruits at, at the time that the Holy Spirit was poured out upon the believers, they were the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Now we, at the end, will be the full harvest of the wheat at the end. Now if the apostles and all the believers in, in the first century were the first fruits. Now that doesn't mean they were resurrected. I mean, they were the first fruits of this great harvest of wheat. Listen, throughout the scriptures, God's talking about us like a harvest and wheat. And, and he's speaking to us concerning the trees. There's a reason. God is, the whole, the whole life of Israel is harvesting, is, is um, the harvest. The five processes of the harvest, the reaping, the, the gathering, I think the reaping is the same as gathering, the process that we, that we call the evangelists. Okay, and I, I'm not going to go into all, all of them right now. Okay. But what I'm saying is each process of the fivefold ministry has to do with the work of the harvest. So this is not a new thing that came about that Yeshua brought us. He gave us a greater understanding through the fivefold ministry, the spiritual understanding of what the work of the harvest is. God needs all five processes. He needs the evangelist, he needs the pastor, the teacher. The prophets and the apostles. And all those five processes has to do with what happens to the wheat. The process of the wheat getting to an omer that clings to the hand of the high priest to make it a perfect omer. Okay, so, and then they make these loaves out of them. Okay, so the goal is that we cling to God, that we stay close to him. Okay, and that there's no impurities. There's no, there's not, no chaff left. Uh, so even the teacher, if you know it says in the, in the scriptures that the wind blows, right? They, they would put up this, this winnowing fork and the, the bad stuff, the chaff would blow away and the good seed would fall to the ground. Well, that's the job of the teacher, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're supposed to be rightly dividing the word of truth. The teachers out there should be teaching us that. But we've forsaken the word of God, many of us. And many of the teachers in the church have forsaken the word of God. And what they've done really has been to be tossed about by every wind of doctrine that's come along. And so we get, we get the you know, Pentecostals, Episcopalians, Baptists, all these different kinds of denominations by forsaking the word of God. God's not into denominations. He's into unity and love and a pursuit and a hunger and thirst and a desperation for the truth. It's a truth that's going to set us free. Did he say 
you know, this denomination is going to set us free, or, you know, he said the truth is what's going to set us free. So, he, in fact, actually, the scriptures say there's one doctrine, one thing, one baptism. Does it say, no, there's there's the way the Pentecostals baptize. Oh, no, the way the Messianic Jews baptize. No, he didn't say it like that. He said there's one baptism. You know, the, the first fruits of barley, Yeshua, he, he, he gave his life. And he resurrected. And he had, he's walking in the power of the resurrection. And he's given that power to his people, to the believers, to the, they call the saints, the, the righteous ones of God. Okay, and well, there's something else that happens. We all get a physical baptism, right? A water baptism, right? How many haven't gotten a water baptism in here? Okay, so you've all gotten a water baptism? It's, it's not the, the ritual of a water baptism that matters. It's when you come up, you're now saying, I'm living like he lived in the resurrection power. I am not going to live anymore according to my flesh. So there's a connection between that day and then 50 days later is when the Holy Spirit comes down. And he gives you the baptism of the Spirit. The baptism of the water and the spirit are connected through the, the feast of the celebration of Bikarim, the first fruits. This is called Bikarim, Shavuot, and the last one at the resurrection was called Bikarim. And we are tied together. And through his death are we made alive. We live. And we live in his power and his authority. That's the story behind Shavuot. I was concerned I wouldn't remember all this. But we are all tied together. All of us are one, and not one of us is different than the other. Okay, we're, we need to, to, to do the changes that we need to right now. Because not only that, the whole season is changing today. Whatever was happening in the world, and in this country, and in Israel, and all that, everything is about to switch around. Everything's about to change. Now, whether it happens right away, I don't know. Okay, but I do know that we're entering a whole new season, a season of the harvest, and a season of change, a radical change. And I don't know if it's going to manifest in the world. It might. You know, if, if tomorrow or Monday morning you wake up and suddenly you get use your telephone or your TV won't work or something, it's because something's about to change. Okay, the great reversal that we've been talking about. I'm hoping it's sooner than later. Actually, more than me is hoping it's sooner than later. Because I, I think we're all sick of all the deception and evil that's going on. And we're believing for it to change and the right people. To, I really believe God's going to bring a great blessing upon his people. But it's not for us. It's to give glory to him. At the time. Amen. Okay, so here's, here's what I want to do. Um, if you want to recommit yourself to the Lord, and, and it, it doesn't have to be just, you know, giving your life over to the Lord. It could also be for a new passion, for a new fire. And let's all join under here and recommit. And how we're going to do it is break your notes. And we're going to read in English, because Hebrews, most of you don't know the Hebrew. And we're going to, and we're going to read through the Ten Commandments. And we're going to acknowledge that he gave us the Ten Commandments. He gave us this word. He spoke it so that we could live victoriously. And they're not just words. They're not just the letter. They are spirit. Words of the spirit. So you want to come up here? else but you. It's it's what you're saying between you and the Lord right now. I want passion. I don't want my passion to end. I don't want it to be defeated by all the all the terrible news and all the terrible things that's happening. Yes, our spirits are vexed by all the evil going on. 
But you know what? God's promise is true, and He is always true, and He will never fail. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you, ever. So let's read it together. I know it's kind of hard to read. There's not a whole lot of light in here, but let's try. I know He Yehovah now. I am Yehovah, your God. All together, I am Yehovah, your God, who has taken you out of the land of Egypt from the house of slavery. There shall not be unto you the gods of others in my presence. You shall not make for yourself a statue, nor of any image of that which is in the heavens above, or that which is in the earth below. Or that which is in the water beneath the earth, beneath the earth. You shall not prostrate yourself to them, nor shall you worship them. I am Jehovah, your God, a God who is jealous, who visits the sins of the fathers upon the children, and upon the third generation, and upon the fourth generation for my enemies, but who acts with kindness for thousands of generations to those who love me and those who observe my commandments. You shall not take the name of Jehovah your God in vain, for Jehovah will not absolve anyone who takes his name in vain. Remember the day of the Sabbath to sanctify it. Six days shall you labor and you shall do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to Jehovah your God. You may not do any work, you, your son, and your daughter, your slave, and your maidservant, your animal, and your comfort who is within your gates. For in six days Jehovah made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and he rested on the seventh day. For this reason, Jehovah blessed the day of the Sabbath and sanctified it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days will be lengthened upon the land that Jehovah your God gives you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not testify against your fellow testimony that is false. You shall not covet the house of your fellow, nor shall you cover the wife of your fellow, or the husband, his slave, his maidservant, his ox, his donkey, nor anything that belongs to your fellow. That's, that's it. Okay. Think about this. Every single, every single thing that's been happening in this country has been the breaking of these commandments. If the evil knows how to break them, then we should know how to do them there. <laughs> so, so let's uh, let's uh, you can worship here, or you can go out there and worship. It's probably better to go out there and worship. Let's just worship the Lord, give Him praise and honor. If you want to come under here, you're welcome to come under here and worship. And um, but we're gonna have some praise and worship right now. <clears throat> Shabbat Shalom, those online.